We've got ourselves a Monday night football game, Chiefs and Bucks. Mark Zinn and I have a player prop, as we often do on the show on Monday. And we're also talking NBA for our double play. There's going to be a lot more NBA on the show now uh, with the Major League Baseball season over with. I know the less said about that, the better, Mark. Hawks, Celtics, your neck of the woods. This is the game you would like to talk about. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks are the only team in the league perfect to the over. All seven of their games are over, uh, have gone over, I should say. Until last night, they had not covered a single point spread, but they did beat a depleted New Orleans Pelicans team uh, for their first cover. Uh, what do you think is going to happen when they play the Boston Celtics, who this just in are very good? Yeah. Um, look. The other thing that I've talked about, you and I have talked about this as we are starting to evaluate the NBA season and it's beginning to unfold. You know, we, I did cash an NBA bet last week, first one of the season, which was great. But, you know, we're kind of taking a very limited approach to the NBA uh, mm -hmm. as we go forward. Tonight, we'll look at the Atlanta Hawks against the Boston Celtics and look at the Celtics team total. Because guess what? This just in, the Atlanta Hawks defense is still really, really, really bad. Uh, in fact... They are picking up right where they left off last season with the third worst defensive efficiency in the NBA, uh, which is no surprise. Now, you look at what they have done over the course of this season um, to start this season. They gave up 116 against Brooklyn, who is not a good team, but they gave up 120 to Charlotte. And then here comes the run after winning the first two. 128, 121, 133, and 123 in four straight losses. They snapped a streak last night. You mentioned New Orleans being depleted. Yeah, no, New Orleans, no Zion, no DeJounte Murray, no C.J. McCollum last night. It's no wonder that New Orleans only scored 111 points. I know Boston's not going to have Jalen Brown tonight, but really that doesn't concern me. Uh, the Hawks play zero defense. We know what a liability they are. The longer Trey Young is on the court, the more points they're likely to give up. And let, hey, let's hope that Atlanta actually is scoring. Let's hope that Atlanta is pushing this pace. Let's hope that Atlanta is actually making this a competitive game. Because the one way I see this not get Boston not getting there is if Atlanta, who's on the second night of a back to back, shoots so poorly that Boston gets out to such a big lead that Atlanta calls off the dogs midway through the third quarter into the fourth quarter and says, screw it. And Boston only has to win this thing, you know, 118 to 95, right? And that's the end of it. So the blowout factor here, which I don't want to say is very much in play because uh, I don't think it is with Atlanta being completely healthy on the offensive end. But if that's what happens, then, yeah, Boston won't get over this number. But the game doesn't go over for an eighth straight time with Atlanta if Boston doesn't get to 122. And certainly um, it's not going to go over if it's a blowout because it'll be very one-sided. And we don't think Atlanta's going to blow out Boston in any size, way, shape, or form. They don't have the capacity to do that. No. unless Boston gets locked in their team hotel and doesn't get out. So let's just continue to run with this trend here. Boston over 122 and a half, my half of the double play. Smash that like button if you agree with Zinno there. Now, Mark Zinno, as you all know, a very logical, a very smart, savvy individual. So it's uh, only... Are you still it's keeping on... this? No, no, hold on here. Stay tuned. I'm going somewhere with this. Um, it's very logical that you would bet the over uh, involving a team that is 7-0 and to the over. I, on the other hand, Mark, uh, you know, I marched to the beat of my own drum, and you got the Cleveland Cavaliers in my neck of the woods. They're 7-0 and straight up and against the spread. Guess what I'm going to do today? I'm going to fade them is what I'm <laughs> going to do. The, For sure. the Cavs, uh, look, this is the first time since 2010, we have seen a team start 7-0 and straight up and against the spread. The last time it happened, it was so long ago, it was 2010. New Orleans was still known as the Hornets. They didn't give that nickname back to the Charlotte Bobcats yet. So uh, it's been a while. That Pelicans team wasn't particularly great either. I looked it up. They finished 46-36. and 36, uh, So they were basically 500 the rest of the way. Just the third time in the last 30 years that a team is started 7-0 straight up and against the spread. And the Cavs tonight are facing a Milwaukee team. They just played Saturday. Watched this game. I was at a, a party Saturday night. We had this one on. It was a great finish seeing the Cavs win on a Donovan Mitchell jumper at the buzzer. They were actually two-point underdogs on the road for Cleveland, despite their unbeaten record in that one. I think this line has just moved too far for tonight's rematch. Seven, we're talking about crossing key numbers. 
The Bucs, they haven't been good so far this year, okay? They've lost five straight. I think they come in a little desperate. This is a team with, with two stu- superstars. Mark, pardon me. Easy for me. To, Giannis uh, and Damian Lillard, okay? And, and the Cavs cannot possibly, cannot possibly continue to shoot at a 52% overall clip. Let's grab an inflated number with Milwaukee Algonquin for the good land. Bucks plus seven, my half of the double play to go along with Zinno. Celtics team total over. Hmm. Thoughts? Um, it is a on-brand play for you. Um, people will will associate this type of play with you now that they associate the word South Kakalaki with you as well. So much to the 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 pleasure of the folks in the comment section who agree with you that South Kakalaki is a thing. I would tend to disagree that South Kakalaki. North Kakalaki. East Kakalaki. There is no Kakalaki. Okay. None. No, no, no lackeys. No Kaka, no lackeys. What is Kakalaki Algonquin for? Um, you're a or moron. did they not say that? Okay. No, they did not say that. <laughs> I don't think they called people morons in the Algonquin tribe. I think they were very nice people. Uh, by um, the way, before we get to Monday Night Football. Yellowstone is coming back, so I might learn something about uh, you know native tribes. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. Um, are you a fan, of, right, you a fan of that show? Have you been watching Yellowstone? No, I, no, I don't. I, I, I Look, I'll be honest with you. I don't have time to watch shows very often. I'm watching all these sporting events. I don't Would you know. I like should... some Netflix recommendations instead? <laughs> I do know. Uh, Mark Zitto will be on Wager Talk today, later on, noon Eastern, with uh, Prez. If you closed your eyes, you probably thought you were listening to the Prez right there. But uh, no, Zitto will be joining Prez and Teddy on Wager Talk today. So you know, just another reason to be subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Came back from 3-0. I didn't know that until I saw that documentary. It was incredible. Uh, by the way, I, but I'm going to bring this full. Watch this. Watch this. This is good. This okay. is good uh, podcasting yeah. here. Tell me. When Prez said, let me follow up that breakdown with a Netflix recommendation. <laughs> I, that was the last time I was on Wager Talk today. He was talking to Adam Trigger. I'm going to bring up Adam Trigger right now because the college basketball season st- no. tips off tonight. A lot of games. Tips off at noon Eastern, as a matter of fact. It may have already tipped off by the time you're watching the show. Uh, And if you want some help handicapping college hoops, I highly recommend checking out all of Trigg's previews here on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. I did one with him about pit basketball. Uh, The show went exactly as you would imagine. Trigg broke down the roster of pit one through 12. And I talked about the beer selection at the Peterson event center. I mean, so that's how that went. (laughs) Love, love Trigg. If you could sit through those breakdowns, you're a better human than I am. There's about three minutes in it. Come on, that's wrong. The guy's doing good work. I like Trigg. People, people need to watch. Who doesn't that? love Trigg? Who doesn't love Trigg? Everybody oh. loves Trigg, but he talks. He talks a lot. He's a talker. He's a talker. Oh, wait a minute. Wait Uh-oh. a minute. We're, we're, oh, there, there we go. There. Uh, speaking of talkers, somebody wants to connect. You know, All we, right. We should, have, we should have had the whole Wager Talk staff dressed like Tokyo Brandon for Halloween. That would have been hysterical. That would have been, yes. I've got some shirts that I think would fly. It would, it would have worked. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Let's connect let's move with Monday Night Football. Yeah. Let's connect <laughs> with Monday Night Football. Chiefs and Bucks. Um, the Chiefs have a good defense. The Bucks don't have many receivers. Uh, yeah. It could be tough sledding for Baker Mayfield in this Bucks offense tonight. However, uh, it's not too often I use the word aghast on this show. Mark, but you and I, before the show began, were aghast equally that Cade Otten, the Bucks tight end, and really Baker's only reliable uh, receiving threat in this game was more than two to one in the anytime touchdown market. So our show yeah. best bet is Cade Otten plus 210 anytime touchdown. Tell the fine people why they should be betting this prop. Well, look, we have hit a prop on Monday Night Football, I think, a touchdown prop, that is, I think, three straight times um, when we've I'll given out an that. eight-time touchdown scorer. So we're going to go back to the well here one more time and look at Tampa Bay. As you mentioned, Kate Otten, the only legitimate receiving threat that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have. And this is a spot where you look at last week when he played the first game um, against the the Atlanta Falcons without 
uh, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, all Kate Otten do is get 10 targets, catch nine balls for 81 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, that seems to uh, uh, be a pretty good barometer of what we're going to see. Oh, by the way, if you are into this sort of thing, the Chiefs allow um, the second most um, yardage to tight ends on the season. So they are uh, one of the worst teams against defending tight ends in the NFL. And uh, they give up nearly 80 yards a game. So viable as well. Maybe look at Otten's receiving yards prop or just receptions because the Chiefs allow seven receptions per game to tight ends. So I think there's a lot of different ways you can play it, but we'll we'll take the one with the biggest biggest number here in our favor and go uh, Kate Otten anytime touchdown for the Buccaneers tonight. Just looked it up. We are two for two with anytime touchdown bets this season on the show. It was Josh Allen and it uh-huh. was uh, – Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase for the Bengals. Okay. Both of those touchdowns were not just – not only did that catch any time touchdowns, they were first TD scorers in each of those games. That's right. We, 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 the, it was the Juwan Johnson prop that we got. The receptions prop was the other one that we hit, uh, that we gave and, out on Monday night. And? And last week, we had George Pickens over 60 and a half receiving yards, which right. looked dead we, in the water I mean, till he caught a big us. one late in the game. We're very well, smart. But I even people. told you it was all going to come on one reception. You, yeah, you did. You did. You're very smart. What do you want me to say? Uh, not according to the people who bought my Packers pick. <clears throat> I wasn't. Well, look, I, I look, man. They would have covered for me if they if uh, Love didn't throw that atrocious pick six at the end of the oh, first it was half. So bad. There is it was there so is a bad. lot of bad quarterback play in this league as I God. slam this thing down. It's beyond. It's it's just beyond frustrating. I I, I can't even. It was it, the coaching and the quarterback play is completely in the can. It's not it's good. It's terrible. Like, I, I, good. you know, there was a couple of years ago, and I, I used to do a pool with a very good friend of mine, and I would always say, especially as you got to, like, week six, seven on, when you kind of got a good idea what teams are, it was always, I'm only betting good coaches, good quarterbacks, right? That's the only teams I'm backing. I don't care if they're a favorite or a dog. I'm not backing a team that doesn't have a good coach and a good quarterback. Because there's just too much variance of volatility that's brought in. Now, if, if I were to use that philosophy now, I got like, what, five teams to choose from every week? That's it? And they yeah, may be playing much. each other. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, who are the coach-quarterback combinations that you really trust in this league right now? The crossable. Obviously, Reed Mahomes, right? The Rams, honestly. Even though the Rams are, what, like a 500 team? The, you you Rams, trust Mc- like, I mean, They're so bad on the other side of the ball. Like, you still yeah, trust Shanahan and Purdy, right? Like, you trust Campbell and Goff. You trust Lamar and Harbaugh. Do you tr- even McDermott trust and McDermott Allen? and Allen? I think McDermott's an idiot. But, you know, neither here nor there. Um, that, that's, that's really about it. Like, what other – I'm just looking I, – I, I guess Tomlin and whatever putts he's putting out there under center. Yeah, but that's the problem. Do you like it. the quarterback? And then in the no, other – the other part of Pennsylvania, you've got I, – I, Jalen Hurts is okay, but Sirianni's a complete clown. I, I mean, other than that, it set everybody else on fire. There's like five teams that you can trust right now with a good coach and a good quarterback. Beyond that, did maybe you, Harbaugh and Herbert, like, to a certain extent. Did, did, did we mention uh, Campbell and, and Goff? I apologize I did, I if you snuck that in. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure they are. And ben Johnson, yeah, the great the- offensive coordinator. I, I, th- I thought, by the way, going back to bring a full circle again, Detroit Green Bay, I thought Ben Johnson, the, the Lions' excellent offensive coordinator, just made Green Bay look very, very foolish. That Detroit simply outcoached Green Bay in that game. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, sir, okay, certainly we uh, are going in a different direction here. Uh, speaking of... <laughs> I'll tell you what I love when that message. Uh, yes, right. that's our cue. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. And uh, do the music. Do the music. That means it's time for a cigar. I didn't even get a chance to promote. I got a free play on Gatopi. No one cares. La Liga. Four percent EV on the Slash BP. I'm slash MZ. All the plays will be there. The more that we have up on the page, it's probably going to win. Mostly. You're ready for it. Why are you saying Getafe? Get out. No one wants to hear about soccer.